everybody. My name is Alexis Vivian and I'm with Alamance County Public Libraries and this is Adrian Farr, local author. Today we're going to do a special story time with you and first we're going to actually have a little conversation so we can introduce you to this wonderful author. <laughs> All right, hi Adrian. how are you doing today? I'm great Alexis, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for coming. It's mm -hmm. really exciting to be able to showcase your book. I love ballerinas, number one. And number two, it talks about breathing exercises to calm yourself. So I really think it's a great book for especially kids. Mm -hmm. um, I know my daughter has those nerves mm -hmm. sometimes. So, you know, is this story um, maybe a story that is actually clo hits close to home? Is it a true story? <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it does. Um, it's So my daughter, she is a competitive cheerleader. Um, she's been doing that since she was five with uh, Champions in Motion, um, which I know is pretty, you know, popular around our area. Mm -hmm. um, so her first competition, it was at the um, Coliseum that's on the state fairgrounds. Huge, huge crowd, right? So I just kept telling her, I was like, baby, you know, your routine, just keep breathing, just do your thing, you're going to be fine, right? And she's done great ever since, right? So, you know, fast forward, you know, 10 years later and she's still competing. She still gets nervous, but she always breathes. Um, but on my own personal journey, um, I realized as an adult that I had always suffered with anxiety. I just didn't know what name to give it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I had, you know, a personal experience that really inspired me to go to therapy, um, which was a, you know, very, very transformative um, experience, right? Um, and during that, my, my therapist she actually taught me some holistic ways to manage my anxieties and breathing was one of the things that I found that she mentioned I was like well, I've always been doing this and just never really realized it so um, I definitely wanted to put that in the kids story just because you know my generation I'm an 80s baby um, you know we were taught just to you know muscle through and we really weren't given skills to cope with those real feelings that you know present themselves as we're going through challenges in life so you know it's a powerful powerful message for children and it's an equally powerful message for us adults i completely agree um my mother taught me about breathing whenever i was upset but you talk about it with nerves mm -hmm. and i never thought to put it together like mm -hmm. that and the way you explain it is I thought really good for adults, but also for children to have that visual picture. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that makes it more impactful, you know? So that's really, really cool. I really like that. Um, so thank you for writing this. Uh, when did you decide that you wanted to put this in a book? Yeah, so funny story. You know how we all have those friends who um, they're, they challenge us? So my friends, um, we all went to college together. Um, at Virginia Union uh, my freshman year and that's in Richmond so oh, all three of us used to write and we realized by being mommies wives working things of that nature that there were just things that we lost while we were trying to take care of home and writing was one of those so we challenged each other to write and to turn something in within a week and I was the only person who turned something in. Um, <laughs> so um, I definitely thank them for uh, for pushing me. Um, but once I sent them, you know, what I had written, they um, they were like, yeah, you really should get this published. This is really good. I was like, are you sure? Um, and my, my roommate from college, so, you know, she patched me with uh, my publisher, um, Audrey Hines, and she actually helped me publish my first book. So had it not been for that challenge, had it not been for that push from my really good friends, I probably never would have had um, the the courage to do that because that's that's a completely vulnerable moment. Talk about sharing your work and sharing, you know, your heart. Yes, yeah. I completely understand that. I do. Well, so you said this is your first book. Mm -hmm. Do you have any more? So not yet. I have okay. one that's in the illustration phase. Um, so hopefully, I'm not going to put a date on it, but hopefully we'll see something this year with that one. Um, and then I am um, in partnership with another illustrator for my third book. Um, I'm a busybody, so then I'm also trying to figure out how to come up with um, a coloring and activity book that um, I feel satisfied with. Yeah. Um, so I have that all the way put together. I just need to go through and do some edits and then, you know, borrow me some courage and go on ahead and put it out there. <laughs> well, I'm excited to see it. I'm excited to, you know, get to experience that too. This book is 
been really great. And so I can't wait to see what else you have to do. So I hope you guys have learned a little bit about Adrian, and um, she's going to actually read us a story now. So if you guys want to sit back, get comfortable, and let's get those wiggles out a little, really quick. Let's whoo! Maybe do some breathing. Ready? Let's take a deep breath in. One, two, three, four. Let it out. All right. So are you guys ready? We'll start now. Here you go. Dancing with Butterflies by Adrian Barr, illustrated by Sheila Alejandro. So first, I do want to read um, my dedication to my little dancer, Leah. You are my greatest gift. I'm so grateful that I was chosen to nurture you through life's journey. I admire the strength that you have within you and your artistic nature. I love you at every stage of life, and I am excited to see the woman you'll become. I will forever be proud to be your mom, and I'm sure that your parents feel the same way about you, too. All Leah wants to do is dance. She had found her passion, that one thing she could do all day, every day. Leah loved bending, stretching, twirling, jumping, and gracefully moving to music. Leah's dance teacher, Miss Dora, would help her learn new moves two days a week. Always good to move and stretch, move your body. I can't dance though, can you? <laughs> At home, Leah's mom would play music so Leah could dance around and practice her moves. Leah loved to dance in front of the long mirror in the hallway. She felt so free. Look at that, look at how peace she is. Leah would close her eyes and imagine she was dancing on stage with big, bright lights shining on her and the audience cheering, yay, go Leah. But this time, when Leah opened her eyes and thought about all those people watching her, she began to feel something. It felt like a vacuum came and stole her air and a drum was playing in her chest. My goodness, Leah had a lot going on in that moment, didn't she? What do we think is going on with her? Leah wasn't sure if this was something she should tell her mom. She didn't want to worry her, and she thought the feeling would stop and never come back. So she kept it to herself. The next week at practice, Miss Dora told the class that they were having a dance recital in three weeks. Mm. A lot of pressure. You know, sometimes we sit in our rooms and we think things, and it's always good to share. There's never anything that's too much to bear for your parents. That's why they're there. Cookie asked, what's a recital? Miss Dora replied, a recital is when you perform in front of a crowd showing them what you've learned. Hmm. Leah quickly felt that funny feeling again. It felt like something was fluttering in her tummy. After practice was over, Leah's mom picked her up. Car rides are the best. <laughs> As they were heading home, Leah's mom asked, So Ladybug, Miss Dora tells me you all are going to have a recital. How are you feeling about it? Leah had that strange feeling again, so she stayed quiet. What's wrong, baby? Asked mom. Leah said, Every time I think about being in front of all those people, my stomach starts to feel funny. Oh, honey. Sounds like you have the butterflies, Mom said. Leah exclaimed, butterflies? How do you get butterflies in your stomach? How do you get butterflies in your stomach? <laughs> Mom explained, the butterflies are just a feeling. Those butterflies are your body's reaction to being nervous about something. It can feel like a twister of butterflies blowing around in there. But did you know you can calm those butterflies? Leah replied curiously, how, Mommy? I have to know. I don't like this feeling. If you take a deep breath and let it out slowly, the butterflies will calm down. It's like you're controlling the wind to stop the butterflies. Once they calm down, you can focus on doing whatever you have to do, Mom said. 
I want to try it, Leah exclaimed. Okay, honey, give it a try. I'll do it with you, Mom said. We'll start by taking a good, deep breath, holding it in and counting to four, then slowly letting out the air and counting to four. Imagine you're blowing a dandelion. We'll do this four times. One, two, three, four. You can even close your eyes if you like, Mom said. They took in another deep breath. This time, Leah closed her eyes. Then they let it out. One, two, three, four. How do you feel, honey, Mom asked. Leah noticed the butterflies within her had settled. I feel better, Mommy, it worked. Later that night, after Mom had tucked her into bed and gave her good night kisses, Leah began to practice the breathing again. She liked the way taking those breaths and releasing them made her feel. Every time she inhaled, she was inhaling calm. And every time she exhaled, she was releasing anything that bothered her. She felt like she was the princess of air, controlling each moment by just breathing. It felt so magical to her. This is my favorite, favorite illustration in the whole book. There's nothing like being tucked in by your mom. The day of the recital had finally come. Leah and her classmates were dressed in beautiful, long, flowy dresses and were waiting on the sides of the stage. Leah peeked out to see if she could find where her mom was sitting, but all she saw was a sea of faces. Instantly, the butterflies in her stomach began to put on their own show. Own show. No, they had to be scary, my gosh. Oh no, Leah thought. There's so many people and the butterflies are back. Just then, Miss Dora announced it was time to go on stage. Go do your best. All of you will do great, she said. Look at that troubled face on Leah. My goodness. She is having a time. Leah felt like those butterflies were walking her on stage instead of her feet. Her hands got sweaty and the drums began playing in her chest again. Her legs began wobbling with the drums. There's so much going on. What do I do about these butterflies and drums, Leah thought. Just as Leah walked to her spot, she saw her mom in the front row. Mom smiles and motions for her to breathe. Oh, that's right, Leah thought. I can calm them down. Leah took a deep breath and let it out slowly. She could still feel those butterflies. Leah closed her eyes and took another deep breath, then let the air out slowly. One, two, three, four. She did this another two times, imagining herself gently blowing a dandelion. She felt calm and at home in her body, confident that she could dance carefree. It worked! The music and lights came on and Leah and her classmates began to dance. Leah dances with grace, not missing a beat. Her arms stretched towards the ceiling and her legs and feet kept perfect time with the routine and music. Leah realized that breathing helped her clear her mind so she could perform and have fun in the moment. Once the dance was over, the crowd stood up and cheered. Leah looked at her mom and they smiled at each other. Mom blew her kisses and continued cheering. Leah was so proud of herself. She calmed those fluttery butterflies, stopped the beating drums, and danced beautifully on stage. She felt like she could do anything. And so can you. Well, Adrian, thank you so much for reading your story today. That is a beautiful story, and I hope you guys remember how to breathe. But if you don't, we actually, in support of our local author, have several uh, free copies for you to pick up at the library. Um, all you have to do is come in and say, I need my copy of Dancing with Butterflies, okay? Also, we'll have a craft kit available that you can make your own butterfly at home. Very simple craft, but you know what? I hope it'll remind you whenever you get the butterflies to just breathe. All right. And 
Also, if you don't make it in for a free copy, remember you can go to authoradrianbar.com and pick up your autographed copy there. We will also, they will also be available on amazon.com. So thank you guys so much for joining us today. I hope that you enjoyed this presentation. Please shout out on our social media and also pop into the library to say hi and tell us how you enjoyed the program, okay? Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye.